So now we need to think of a riddle. I know a moose will be involved. Just like a new day, a breath of fresh air in my life. Okay, we are in the master suite of Grand Janja. Can we just stop doing this voice? Please. Immediately. <laughs> I'll be toasting all my life. How do I know we're going across the border? <laughs> because these are in the truck. <laughs> How did these get in the truck? I don't know. My boots and briefcase waiting at the door. My rock sweetest to meet the one I love. Wow, we made it to Alaska. Woo! This must be the infamous sign. In. All right, good morning. We ended up staying two nights at Watson Lake because the cell phone coverage here is amazing. Muy fabuloso. Yeah, full and bars, full bars LTE right here. And I checked the weather and it said today was going to be sunny and it had been raining for like 72 hours. We didn't want, I mean, the rain was awesome. I think it, it kind of added to the drive getting here. Uh huh. Going through the mountains and the fog, and I think it added to the Liard Hot Springs yes. with the fog and the raindrops. We are going to grab our sign where we can't wait to show you, and we're going to take this conversation in the car. So let's go over to the what's it called? The sign for us? Yes. Did you do a walk around? Oh, I did a walk around, yes. Great. How are you? That's Tori, of course. Trish is getting her work schedule so they can coordinate more phone calls. Wow. Okay, are you ready? We're so excited about this. We did a giveaway. Uh, I think a couple months ago mm -hmm. for the KYD Insiders, it was actually a Wilson Wii Boost, and Mark ended up winning it. I'm gonna hit randomize, you're gonna yell the number, and then I'm gonna look for the line item here on the export, and we're gonna read the name, and it's gonna happen just like that. Just like All that. Right, ready? One, randomize. Two, well, little did we know, he just happened to live in Arizona, so then he, he came by the rig so that we can give him the Wii Boost. Turns out he has a water jet machine. He offered to make us a KYD sign. I gotta show it to you. It's, this is eighth inch stainless steel. Look at this. Is that not amazing? I was a little concerned that maybe that sign was gonna to be too big. So we have a 12 inch version just in case. There are over 80,000 signs here from all over the world. It is so cool. 81,000. The problem has quickly become that all the available real estate requires a ladder. So if you've got a sign that you want mounted securely, bring a ladder. We don't really have a good ladder on the RV. See what I'm talking about? Like we could put it right up there. And then of course, if it falls, it would just go right into that little container, but that's not available. So we're either going to have to find a creative way to get up high or we're gonna have to find something I love. I'd kind of like something where the KYD community can come around here and they could take a picture of it and post it on Instagram so we can follow you. Oh, I hear Trish, maybe she sees something. Okay, so as you know, in 1942, the Army of Engineers was up here building the Alaskan Highway. And there was one private that was here that ended up getting injured, so he was here recuperating, but he started getting homesick. So it was typical for the Army of Engineers to post signs, you know, this way to go do that, this way to go do that. So he decided to post a sign of his hometown. In 1992, he came up here with his wife to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Alaskan Highway. And of course, he is a pretty cool guy to have up here. So his old sign from Danville, Illinois had fallen down. So they recreated it and they did a huge celebration. We found a spot, slightly incognito. It's low enough where you can take a picture with it and we would love to see a picture posted on Instagram. And after we put this up, we're gonna post a little riddle so that you can find it because it's a big forest and you're gonna need a little bit of help. Just yeah. walk through the gates and go straight. Okay. Recording. Awesome, huh? We didn't have room, we couldn't find room for the big boy, but that's all right, we'll put the big boy up in the rig now. 
and we still get, and we got the little guy up here. It just fits nussels right in there like that. And this is a little hint of where you can find it, but it's not gonna be too big of a hint. Check our riddle if you wanna be able to figure out how to get here quicker. Of course, you gotta be good at riddles. <laughs> okay. I interviewed them on my podcast when they were doing their trip together. Two brothers across the states. Very cool. We've got our riddle. The population of Vesper is 541. Mm -hmm. Look for the moose crossing and you're almost done. Just find Spring City before you frown and the KYD sign is just a little ways down. Hope that helps. And I take a it. and take a picture and tag us on Instagram because there's nothing better that we like to do than seeing everybody out having fun and making memories and sharing that with us so we can follow. Good right. luck. Have fun. Give yourself at least an hour. At least an hour. This mm -hmm. is a lot of fun. Okay, Trish thinks it still might be difficult to find. It's an awfully big place. So, if you find yourself walking in circles looking for a clue, just find the buoy and put it above you. And then go step down there. No, don't. <laughs> Trish wants to just give it away. I don't Here's the away. sign. Here it is. There's 80,000 signs. I don't want to drive you crazy. So Trish made a nice little lunch, a little tuna salad for lunch. It was super good. And then Carson called. <gasps> Yay! It was so exciting. We haven't heard from Carson in a couple weeks. It went like this. Okay, because I was so happy today. So he said that you have a package and I just ran over to the post office. He got going. It took a minute. He did, in his defense, he did say that he has not been calling because he did not want to get homesick. Yes. And he just received an Amazon package from us today. And so he was so excited about that, I think he felt like he could muster the confidence, to, confidence call. to call home because he knew he'd get homesick. So I can appreciate that. Well, I don't mind the slow down anymore. I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor. I don't mind selling out or playing cover song. Just as long as friends and family sing along And I don't need more money or a faster car, no Don't need a magazine to call me a superstar, no I'm gonna take this little house and make a home And then I'll never have to face my nights alone Cause in my heart I hear speak And on my face I feel you breathe Next to me To by land, by air, by sea And that is how it's supposed to be Now And that much I can say Now Pulling loaves of bread down from the shell And how rare it is that I stay up past twelve In the backyard we are going to start a garden If that don't sound mighty good I beg your pardon Cause in my heart I hear you speak And on my face I feel you breathe to me, to by land, by air, by sea, and that is how it's supposed to be, now, and that much I can say, now, if they don't love us, we don't need them, let's find our own brand of freedom. They don't love us, we don't need them well, Let's find our own brand of free Well, I don't mind the slow down anymore I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor anymore 
anymore. They should have a sign out front that says, um, RV lot is full. <laughs> We've never seen. No vacancy. And we just met up with Mike and Julie. They live here. And when we pulled into the Walmart, uh, he kind of flagged us down and he said, hey, Trish. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Anyway, we got talking for about 15, 20 minutes. And he said, this is nothing. Yes. He says it'll get even more. But there's it's all um, dirty, like over there, like um, rocks and gravel from the snow. And they can't even like sweep it up and clean because there's so many RVs parked. I, if I had to guess, I'd say there's 50 RVs. I would like to do a time check right now. I'm wearing my sunglasses. Yes. It's beating on my face right here. Mm -hmm. So hold on, where's my phone? So time check, any guesses? Anybody? Anybody wanna guess? 10.06. That's <laughs> Trisha's favorite question. She <laughs> takes her camera and then she's, she's texting Dory and she's like, what time do you think it is? Just take a guess, just take a guess. 11 15 at night come on nobody's interested in that that's amazing so if you end up staying at the walmart across the street which i imagine you would because everybody's doing it then you can walk across the street by earl's restaurant you can take this little walking path behind earl's restaurant and it goes all along this river river and there's little spots here where there's picnic tables well, and I guess that's a bench. But there you was could use a picnic it as a, table. There was, yes. And you can come down here and have a little happy hour. This current is crazy. And by the way, happy hour is from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. <laughs> so there's no rush to get down here for happy hour. It's sunny all the time. All the time. All the time. Okay, we have some unverified information for you. <laughs> what isn't unverified on this channel? <laughs> Our unverified piece of information is that a bald eagle doesn't actually get his white head until he's like five. So we just passed an eagle and he didn't have the bald head, but it was definitely an eagle. Yeah. They're kind of scrappy looking. A little bit. And then they get a little mature. A little and they, prettier. They get their baldness. Their white head. Yes. I'm sure glad that we have a bald eagle as our bird for the United States instead of a turkey. Because that's what they wanted first. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, good job. Who made that? Who made that call? I don't know. One of the founding fathers. Uh, <clears throat> point of order. Thank you, Richard, for sending us the coordinates because this is spectacular. <laughs> it really is. And to make it even better, there's no cell phone coverage. And I know that sounds awfully strange coming from me, but Trish and I are working on a project for the fall that we're pretty excited about. And we have learned that internet can really inhibit true productivity. In fact, we've just created kind of a new daily behavior of one hour in the morning of no internet so that we can work on the things that are the most important because once that internet comes in, it's we work on the fun stuff and sometimes the things that are really important to move ahead and make progress get pushed off a little bit further. So we're gonna work on the, the video tonight. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna get back on the project. And then there's things I wanna share with you about the road and the cell phone coverage and stuff like that. And I also wanna do a fuel report. So we'll just get some chairs out here and we'll revisit in just a second. Trish, where are you? Coming! All right. This is a project that we have been waiting to do, but I didn't want to do it too soon. I wanted to wait until we had to do it. We didn't know if it was really true. I didn't know how much the sun would bother us. Watch this. We're going to play my favorite game. <laughs> what time is it? What time is it, everyone? What time is it? What time do you think it is? Okay? <laughs> is this game getting old? It's not. Is any does anyone find this game? Hold on. And and not only not only do we have to play this game, not only do you have to tolerate this game, but then we have to like prove it to you. 857. They can't see. 
Look, it's just black. It's just black. <laughs> it's 857. 857. Okay. Okay. Look it. Wait, wait. And it doesn't matter if we put these down or up. No. <laughs> And so last night was the first night where the sun was up until 10.30 at night. We have this bubble foam, we have, mm -hmm. not foam, we have this bubble foil stuff and we're gonna cut it to size and I have foil tape. Yes. And so we thought we would do this project with you so that we can embarrass ourselves. <laughs> I find it amusing that you don't like playing my what time is it game, but we listen to your Thurston Howl like all the well, time. Well, you kind of missed the Sir Thurston Howl impersonation, yeah. okay? Because she didn't let me edit it in. <laughs> Have you found yourself tired in a van or ice climbing or maybe invited to a cocktail party at the last minute? <laughs> RVing, trying to protect your tires, tent camping, or have a thermos? Well, we've got just the product for you. Ooh. Ooh. There. Man, that is ugly. Well, we're going to put the shades so down. so depressing. Look at that. A good fit? Yeah. Wow. I'd say we really foiled the sun's plans. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, let's play the game. We're going to play Trisha's favorite game again. Guess what time Guess it is. Guess what time it is. Okay, ready? Ready? Wow. Wow. Seriously okay. dark. Okay, you Look, see that, Trish? There's still, there's still cracks of light over there. I need the tape. Trish, 917. There's still cracks of light. 917. Wait, wait, wait. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Good morning. Couple quick points. First good night's sleep in a few days. Good call on the blackout. It, I think I even fought you against that when we were in town. You did. I did. I was like, we don't need that. We went into our room at 10 o'clock, and by 10.30 we were tired. Imagine that, no light, get tired, yeah. instead of like 12.31, and then we were up at six, we just weren't getting enough sleep. Yeah. So we caught up on all of our sleep this morning. We're running a little bit behind. Today, today's the real moment of truth, really, because the roads should be bad today. If they're not, yes. if they're not bad today, everybody's a liar about Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, you should come immediately. And you should just come right now. We have made it to Beaver Creek and there's a few things I wanted to share with you. First of all, this is the section of the road that is the worst, uh, only because of the frost heaves. The actual condition of the road is, is still very good, with the exception that every few miles, somewhat unpredictable, that the road would just kind of like do, a, they call it frost heaves, but it kind of just does a little roller coaster number. And what my strategy is, and this is something I've never read about, I've never seen it in any books, and that is to stay about four to ten seconds behind Bob. I'm probably wondering at this point who Bob is. Bob is a lot like if you're fishing and you want to know if a fish is on the hook, you see the Bob go up and down. Okay, that's Bob for me. And so I travel about four to six, four, I travel about four to six seconds behind Bob. And then when Bob goes over a big frost heave, I just simply slow down. Now my Bob is a F-350 Dually pulling a triple axle trailer, traveling between 60 and 73 miles per hour, which is perfect for me. And it's probably a little faster than I would be going if I wasn't following Bob. Because sometimes I see what Bob's trailer does and I'm like, oh my gosh, and I slow way down and I just gently go over the frost heave and then I catch back up to Bob. Really working well. The other thing I wanted to update you on is the ah, conditions of the road and what's getting kicked up on the trailer. So you can see on the propane tanks right there, the Hensley hitch, my fake battery boxes, the frame, all this stuff is getting kicked up pretty good. The uh, rock tamer mud flaps are going to be in Fairbanks in another couple days. So it'll be interesting to see what the rock tamer does in terms of this. But I'm not too worried, I don't see any big chips. Okay, we've made it to the Alaska sign, and we're moments from the border, and we thought we would go and just see what type of produce we have. Show them, Trish. 
You can't live there. It's a farmer's market. We have a farmer's market with us. I have lettuce, yeah. and cherries, oh, yeah. cabbage, salad, mushrooms, yeah. watermelon. Watermelon, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Are there lemons in there? Oh, yeah. Lemons, lemons limes. limes. Oh, oh, tomatoes. Those are good. We still haven't gotten the oranges out of the front. Bananas, because you know I like to travel with those. There's some apples, onions, shallots. We eat a lot of fruits and veggies. We do have kind of a plan. We're going <laughs> to... What, are you going to put that in the car? Yeah, that's my plan. Our plan is, and I don't think this is a bad plan, we haven't entirely talked about it yet, is to just declare it. Because normally when you declare something, they're well, then cool you about get in it. Trouble. They're cool about it. If you declare it and have to throw it away, you don't get fined. It's when you're like, no, I have nothing, and they're like, oh, we'll pull over and let me see, and then they find something? That's and a no-no. So we're going to declare it just to see what we really have to throw away. Because we really have thrown away so much produce in all of our border crossings that after a while it kind of gets a little old. <laughs> Don't worry about me. <laughs> Border crossing was not quite like the rest of them. Because that guy was the friendliest border <laughs> patrol agent we have ever experienced. He I told was, us where to get fuel, <laughs> where to eat and toke. Yes, that one has a salad bar, the other one, da da da. <laughs> that diesel pump is broken, so you better get one in. Yes, there, there are border agents and then there are border concierge. He was yes. the border concierge. Gosh, Mark. What? Look at the two huge mosquitoes. <laughs> well. That's funny. We heard they were big. I guess they weren't <laughs> lying. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so this is this Delta Junction marks mm -hmm. the end of the Alaskan Highway. Next, we're getting on what's called the Parks Highway. Yes, and apparently the most, the best highway in Alaska. Cool. Mm -hmm. It was built the last and it was made for real traffic, like it has real shoulders and so it was made in the modern age. Why don't you have shoes on? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. 